Hey, this is Julius. A couple of weeks ago, I was showing you guys videos on how to make a custom um, vehicle created in Maya, and I was successful, as you could see. My only concern was um, this weird anomaly that happened in the middle of the car where a tire magically appeared, and it was kind of weird. So Fabio gave me a hand because he asked me for the model but without the texture so I gave it to him he um, corresponded back to me and said that without the textures it was fine and I said okay so I tried it and he was right there was no textures and there was no anomaly and the physics were still intact my only problem was trying to color this thing so when you don't have a texture it's kinda hard to put um, different textures on different objects so the problem was the the texture but I didn't want to make a car that was all gray and the um, the windows all gray and opaque and the tires were gray there was you know it just looked boring no headlights no side emergency lights nothing like that so I thought about it and I figured out a way to get around that problem it's actually makes more sense than than anything else it's just little bit longer having one one mesh and dealing with one UV file is convenient but it doesn't solve the problem so what I ended up doing was creating this model of um, the Challenger as different pieces for example um, the body this is the body and you could see that that's the only thing that's being selected is the body um, and the body has its own texture. Uh, chrome part has its own this, uh, texture. And you could actually, you know, uh, deselect these and you can see that they're all separate separate pieces of, of um, the car. So with that being said, when you do it this way, it's a little bit harder. You'd have to break up your uh, your piece especially when you combine it but if you started off um, building it in pieces anyway it's easy but you gotta be careful with the the poly count right now this is a hundred and around a hundred and five hundred and four K so that's good also um, your mesh should be called exactly what they are so if you have this for chrome so if you want the chrome to be you know the material on the chrome name it chrome the material on the body called the material body and so forth and so on so that way um, when you export this thing it is gonna you're gonna understand what these things are at um, a glance instead of you know doing some investigative work alright so again this is the hierarchy you group these together you could create a group and then just dump them all in there um, I still have a bone for the uh, tires. It just works better. It worked better for me. I'm sure you won't need it, but I don't want to take a chance of acting weird, so I just keep it the way I was successful in importing the other ones. So I put a bone, mesh, bone, mesh, bone, mesh, or joint, whatever you guys want to call it. And then all the pieces are all here, and you export all that, and you want to. Ex you know export selection okay so once you do that you go to the um, to the game engine this is my my old one and it has that weird tire so I've, I've already imported the new version of the the challenger so let's take a look at that uh, pull it over here wait a second and lo and behold it is there so let's take a peek and there you go no there is no uh, uh, extra mesh but there is a hole that's not really a hole I'll show you how to fix that anyway each one of these parts are separate which is cool okay uh, so if you go into the node view you could see that they're all separate if I pull this out it will come out so that's good that's actually what we want so now I don't want to mess with that so let's go ahead and take a look with uh yeah that's about right that's cool so 
So let's go ahead and play around with the textures on this. Make sure that it'll it'll change as we expect. So this is the body. Let's go and inspect that one. Change it. Like I said, try to make um, an empty TGA, a white one or something. It just helps you find the actual part of the the mesh that it's affecting. So yeah, see it's white. Everything changed white. If if that thing was orange or something, this will be orange. It's just a way to find your way around. Let's make this this gray right there. Okay. So you'd have to go through this entire thing down the line of, of your mesh. So since I'm gonna um, mess around with the the, uh, the interior, I want to make sure that that um, that tire is not there. I go straight to the window. Click on this. And it did change, so let's give it a, a gray. And then come over here, make it two sided. Uh, so change that. And then just play around with the settings a little bit. So this makes it more opaque, so I want it transparent. And lo and behold, there is no um, anomaly. Uh, okay, so let's go to the interior and change that just to break up the, the white. I'm going to make that uh, black, like a black interior. And there you go. Let's make it even blacker. Yep, that's looking cool. Let's go back to the window and give that thing some reflection. There, see? Because I named it correctly, I'm able to move around quite easy. Here's another thing I want to show you guys. I made some um, textures for the tire. So let's go to uh, the tire, All right? And I've made a texture that's in a different part of the... Uh, it's not in the same folder somewhere else. I'll fix that later. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. So there is some texture on there. So you can see it, see? But the tile, the diffuse tile, isn't large enough, so let's put it to 10. And there you go, we got some some tread. Um, let's do the, uh, the bitmap on that thing to make it stand out a little bit more. And there you go. Looks a little weird that it's bright like that, so we could fix that, just bringing it down, give it a little reflection. But you could totally change that in a a graphics program or something. Let's look at this. So everything is looking fairly good. Yep. Uh, we can see inside. So once that's done, you, you probably want to save that. You know, just go ahead and apply. Well, not what I want to save, but you give it a name. Let's save this as a um, Challenger. So now we save that. We could probably go over here and change the um, the model since we have all the settings correctly. We could probably just go like this and just point that to this, and let's see what happens. And there you go. So now I got that model, the new model, as a a vehicle. It's got the physics. All we got to do is, is fix all this part up, which I could do that later. Anyway, I set it up correctly. We still have um, some textures to do to work on. And I hope you guys uh, find this very uh, informative what I just did. So just remember your hierarchy when you're making your your uh, model. This goes. This is true for 3D Max too or 3D Studio. Oh, and another thing I want to show you guys, um, eventually, um, in the future, I could probably do a tutorial on coding some of this stuff, like, for instance, um, this drone, it's got some code, it's way out here, so when um, the character uh, Kelly walks by it, it affects it, so let's move it way over here, now, I get closer. I don't know why it's not spinning. I have to fix that. Anyway, make it closer. Wonder if it'll start at reacting to it.
Yeah, see? So now we got the drone reacting to Kelly. So if you ever wanted to make like a um, World of Warcraft type game where you're looking at it from above, this is probably something you could do. You just make the um, the camera stationary up here. It could only go so far. So you can see the action already happening. So you could just imagine this being like a bunch of little warriors or orcs or something coming towards you. So you could, there's a lot you could do with this particular software. All right, that's it. Talk to you guys soon. Bye. This is Julius over and out. Yeah, this thing is looking pretty sick. Later.